Hi, in this video I'm going to explain what is a, a broad sense and narrow sense heritability. And I know that many students have a trouble understanding the difference. So I hope under 10 or 15 minutes I will explain you and you would know uh, how to solve problems uh, using uh, broad sense and uh, narrow sense heritability. And here is a problem. You uh, have uh, determined the following variance components for the leaf uh, wise in a particular species of plant and here is the four uh, different variances that you got additive genetic variance that is uh, 4.0 dominance genetic variance that is 1.8 and epistatic variance that is uh, 0.5 and environmental variance that is 2.5 and if you know how to solve this problem, you may stop video here, try to solve this problem on your own. And when you would be ready, you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. So, before we'll proceed, uh, I also want to tell you what is the uh, total phenotypic variance. We need this information in order to solve this problem. So, total phenotypic variance would be VP and uh, total phenotypic variance consists of all these four different variances. So this would be uh, additive genetic variance VA plus uh, dominance genetic variance VD plus epistatic variance VI and plus environmental variance VE. So this would be a total phenotypic variance. And we have uh, all the data here, so we can just use this information to find uh, the number. So total phenotypic variance would equal to uh, 4.0 plus 1.8 plus 0 0.5 plus 2.5. So, together this is going to be 8.8. .8. And now, before I will proceed how to find um, um, broad sense and narrow sense heritability, uh, I will explain you or remind you what each um, genetic variance and, uh, means here. So, for example, additive genetic variance, and here would be example. So let me divide the space here. So additive would be, for example, imagine that we have one pair of genes and uh, this is going to be one uh, pair of genes and this is going to be another pair of genes. And imagine that uh, only one um, locus influence, uh, for example, uh, plant height. So this plant would be uh, say 40 centimeters height and this would be 20. And imagine that these uh, two parents produce uh, another uh, progeny that is going to be heterozygous for this uh, locus. And uh, as long as this is going to be Additive uh, uh, trait, and this is going to be uh, intermediate. So this plant going to be thirty centimeters, because here we have uh, each allele would give ten centimeters to the height, and this alleles would give twenty centimeters to the height. So that means that this allele would give twenty centimeters. And this one would give uh, 10 centimeters. So together this is going to be 30 centimeters. So this is um, what we call additive uh, uh, trait. And uh, of course uh, additive genetic variance we see here. So one parent can be 40 centimeters. Another plant can be 20 centimeters. Also we can find uh, 30 centimeters. So this would be variance between 40 and 20 with intermediate 30. 
So, um, what about uh, dominance genetic variance? And this is simple Mendelian genetics when we have, for example, uh, one parent that is going to be heterozygous for one gene, another parent also going to be heterozygous. And when we cross these two parents and we'll build a Punnett square uh, in F1 generation, we are going to find um, different genotypes. And as you see, if it is uh, uh, dominance, so these three um, genotypes would behave as a dominant trait, so would uh, be phenotypically dominant, and this one would be uh, phenotypically recessive, so recessive phenotype. So those, as you see here, we have heterozygous form, uh, it's still phenotypically would look like this homozygous dominant. So this would be dominance genetic variance. And um, epistatic variance is when we have, uh, for example, imagine this is one pair of um, uh, chromosomes and uh, this is another pair of chromosomes. We also may have uh, the third pair of chromosomes and so on. And here on one pair of chromosomes we have genes that may influence expression of the genes on the other uh, chromosome or it can be the same chromosome or uh, can behave uh, even influence uh, expression of the uh, genes not on one chromosome but on, on many chromosomes and uh, not one or two genes it can be much more. So this would be epistatic uh, variance when uh, we would see such picture as this. And environmental variance would be when, for example, we would have a field of, uh, say, uh, whether it's going to be in breed lines, so plants that would be uh, genetically uniform, or it also can be hybrids that also that is also would be genetically uniform uh, still on such field we would uh, see uh, variance between plants uh, some plants can be shorter some plants can be taller some may have uh, uh, smaller leaves another one can have uh, larger leaves and uh, any trait that uh, we can take we can find variants in other plant. And this is due to uh, completely um, environmental factors such as uh, watering regime and uh, sunshine because uh, different parts of the field may get different um, exposure to the sun and uh, also how winds blow and many, many other factors that we call environmental factors. So everything except genetic factors we call environmental factors. So uh, even uh, those plants uh, are genetically uniform, they would still show uh, variance, but that variance would be completely due to environmental factors. So now we can proceed with a uh, final step. We have to calculate um, narrow sense and broad sense heritability. So, um, narrow sense heritability would be h small squared and here we have to divide variance additive by uh, total phenotypic variance. And variance additive here is 4.0 uh, we have to divide by 8.8. .8. And the answer here would be 0 0.45. And um, as you see, I just took uh, additive genetic variance and divided by the total phenotypic variance. And now I will show you how to calculate uh, broad sense uh, heritability. And this is going to be H capital squared. And this is going to be... Um, 
variance additive plus variance uh, dominant plus uh, epistatic variance and divided by variance phenotypic. So total phenotypic variance. And as you see here on top we would have 6.3 divided by 8.8 .8, and the answer here would be 0 0.72 and this is going to be our answer for the uh, broad sense um, heritability and another answer would be for the uh, narrow sense heritability so uh, as you see, once again, uh, it is very easy to remember that uh, here we have uh, three uh, genotypic variants, additive, dominance genetic, and epistatic variants, and this is H capital squared, so this is broad sense, and uh, here we also have narrow sense heritability and this is here so this is going to be h small squared and uh, now I think it's uh, this visual representation would help you to remember that uh, broad sense heritability includes additive genetic variants dominance genetic variants and epistatic variants uh, divided by total phenotypic variants so as you see this is broad and this is narrow and narrow only includes additive genetic variance divided by total phenotypic variance and this is as you see uh, very clear here and now I hope you would be better understand all the uh, problems including uh, broad sense and narrow sense heritability and now uh, you would be able to solve such problems. And if you still have any questions or comments, please write them uh, in the comment box. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Goodbye.